Oh, all right. Hello, everyone. Hello, YouTube. Hello, the world. Uh, everything is good. So I decided to embark on this new project. It's a project by Elemental, uh, Elemental Architects. And so here's a picture of it that I have here that I'm about to show you in a little bit. Uh, but you know, I've been really, really busy uh, trying to create uh, new material and trying to mostly find a way to be organized because uh what i've decided to do is that i think that the best way to work here is that i have to do a project non-stop not uh, not non-stop but um i have to do a project with no cuts you know from a to z without any cuts and so show you the entire time and workflow that it takes to get from point a to point b so that anyone who is is interested would take some time to investigate and and and, and appreciate uh uh and also it's it, it's helpful for people who want to learn as well so there are several reasons why uh doing it this way would be helpful is because um you know a lot of projects currently exist in CAD and they require a lot of translation to beam and stuff like that uh, for example and then and, uh, and obviously AutoCAD is still widely used and since it's a uh, beam uh, since it's a um, widely used uh, standard this would help people understand how to migrate and transition to free CAD and start to you know when they see the hardcore work into it um, and so the, the other reason is because the developers can easily uh, fix FreeCAD by, you know, uh, by, you know, watching the performance of, of some of the tools and bugs. And, uh, you know, I, I wrote some of the re some of these things down so I don't forget them because there's just a lot of stuff I have to do to think about. And, you know, another reason is because it's just fun to uh, to look at FreeCAD and try to actually do s s real projects. And then, it, and then it provides an open source community with, uh, with you know, a blueprint of some projects and some, you know, consistent projects. So this is why, this is some of, you know, just some of the basic reasons why I decided to uh, to embark on this project. Um, so because of, because of the size and scale and scope of this project, um, you know, Providing uh, extremely lengthy videos, one hour, two hour, three hours, if not six hours of the same tedious work is a bit frustrating and annoying. So I've been I've been thinking about how do you organize this uh, from a point of view of people who want to watch it and also from a point of view of the creator. You know, how do I organize myself to create it from this back end and stay organized? And also, how do I also organize the content for people who want it? So... The idea now that I came up with is that maybe, you know, I can record all the entire videos and then provide you with, let's say, a time lapse where you would see me talk and introduce or speak on top of the video where the video is speeding up. I can quickly brush through a few things. This would be useful for people who just want to see the whole process in a quick snapshot, uh, you know, and but don't, don't have the time to really get into the details. But of course, I'm going to be posting the other videos uh, uncut uh, with my voice and perhaps some music uh, and so for those who really want to watch step by step every video every process without no you know hidden whatever uh, you know it's gonna be able to have access to that so uh, so now that being said about the I'm, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about how to best organize the content so things might change here and there depending on how I see fit and experience all of these things and so so now without being uh, without uh, wasting more time I'm going to you know talk about the project itself so uh, so this is the project itself uh, you know it's a project by Elemental you can just go on Google and or whatever or even their website and have access to some of these they're very nice projects uh, just to show you quickly and this is what we're going to be working so there's already a lot of information and documentation out there right now but since the, pro the plants are open source I thought it would be a good thing to bring them into FreeCAD because perhaps you know we can start to, to think about how to make you know 3d uh, 3d uh, uh, documentation I was talking about that with Yuri and he showed me some of the work he's been working on where he's creating 3d documentation and stuff like that so I think it's it's pretty cool and so uh, it'll be a good thing to you know see how we can demonstrate this open source project 
and uh, and see how far this goes. So uh, here's just a picture of one of the you know one of the evolved way that the residents have taken this project. But uh, so let me take you quickly into the speed labs itself right here. So um, so as you can see here, for example, uh, I decided to, you know, the, the plants are available in AutoCAD. So what I do is that I go into AutoCAD or draft side uh, and I draw basic lines and import them in FreeCAD and see how the units convert so I can understand how the units convert first. Uh, and then now I go back into, uh, uh, here I'm just basically looking at all the remaining files and, and I tried to export all of them in DXF first as a whole, but obviously it didn't work because, you know, uh, DXF uh, files are not clean there's a lot of things that do not convert well so usually you just want clean lines and because you're not the person who created the file you have no control on its previous history and sometimes it's pretty hard to clean up a file especially if you're not familiar with all the tools if you're not an AutoCAD genius or whatever some sort so so what I do in those kinds of circumstances, I, I trace over, I, I simply use a, a line that I, a layer that I create myself and it's a line, a simple line and I just trace over the basic information that I want to extract and basically I extract them one at a time because at this point you don't really know what um, uh, what lines are not working and what's going on if it's the text that's got an issue if it's the hatch that's got an issue but before I before I started this video I did lots of testing lots of testing you cannot even imagine the amount of frustration that I had because I was not able to properly import this thing in a way that can, that speeds up the work but you know nevertheless you still have to do the hard work and get it done somehow so as you can see here I'm working with the grids. I the first thing I did is that I went and imported the grids first. Uh, I imported the grid and I am, uh, you know, I'm placing them diligently each one at a time so that because the grid is the foundation of a lot of things. If you don't get them right, you're not, you know, for the most part, a lot of uh, things in your drawing is not going to be accurate. For example, if you watch the videos. Uh, closely you see that a lot of the AutoCAD lines are not very clean, they're not very straight, they're not all these things. This is you know what happens when you're usually modeling in 2D. Uh, you can quickly recognize projects that have been modeled in 2D versus 3D. No matter how good the 2D is going to be, there's going to be areas where you're going to spot those lines. So here for example I'm just um, selecting all the the, the concrete structure as well uh, you know it's important that I do it one at a time because it allows you to spot the areas where um, the lines are not accurate maybe the column itself is not straight and stuff like that so you want to be able to notice some of these discrepancies the intensity or the quantity amount of these uh, discrepancies when you in, so uh, you know it's looking into the details itself so that uh, you can achieve a, a much cleaner drawing uh, because what we want to do here is that we want as much accurate information since we're not the one who designed the project we're not in control of let's say the dimensions the initial dimension the thought process all of that what we our job basically here is to recreate what already exists so we want to get as much accurate information as we can now along the modeling experience of this we might change our mind and and actually notice that the, we can fix the discrepancies this is why modeling in 3d is much more interesting because the 3d usually is much more uh, easier to work with visually and once you extract the 2d aspect of it everything looks clean and so here basically I'm going through the same process uh, it's and you will see that it's pretty tedious that the first steps of these things um, I am basically still very you know painstakingly doing it one at a time one at a time but also this allows you to spot the areas where you can automate and at the same time you gradually increase in speed you gradually begin to understand uh, you know what aspect does not translate well what does translate well it's just a question of experience and and and, and testing it out and gradually and gradually you would see you know you begin to spot the areas where you can uh, work much faster much accurately much more intuitively but but this is how you have to do it you have to do it step by step first you know, so here also, um, as you can see, I'm scaling the objects as well. Um, I wasn't used to, I didn't used to know how to use the scale tool 
in FreeCAD very well. I still think it's not as, as, as good as in other programs, but somehow in this project, I was able to make good use of the scale tool. And I actually like the fact that I was able to scale a lot of these things uh, pretty accurately. I just had to convert the lines that I imported uh, by a unit of 1000 to have them exactly uh, uh, match um, this the, the proper size and scale. But since I've not tested this workflow in uh, Imperial uh, units, I'm not exactly sure by how much I would have to scale it, uh, by, by how many uh, units I have to scale it in Imperial to get accurate dimensions. So much testing needs to be done. Um, furthermore, um, so what else can I say about this um, as it is going along? Uh, I do not seem to be hearing any of my music. Interesting. Okay. So basically I'm still uh, uh, looking at all of this, drawing each one at a time. So in the next part, I'm going to do the elevation. So, you know, so the way I'm trying to organize that is that I'm going to do uh, a bulky set of videos on just doing the plans, extracting the plants, and then the next part is going to be on the elevations and everything, and most of everything that I need for the elevation. And then the next step after that will be the entire site. And all of that will be phase one. Phase one means importing all of the DXF information that you have. Since there's no uh, current cheap method to do this at this point that I know of, you know, you have to do it, you know, you have to do it. You have to take your time to do it. So, um, so we will say that phase one of every project is to uh, cleaning up their DXF and importing them so that they can work with them in an accurate way in FreeCAD. Uh, we're going to use them as guides and reference and uh, things to measure things with things, you know. So, and of course, we can always go back and forth where we reference and refer some information back and forth between uh, the the initial draft site documents and 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 uh, and uh, FreeCAD itself. So. Let's see uh, how this turns out to be. So as you can see, uh, I take the time to import groups of object. Now the, the, the good thing is that uh, uh, when you import it this way, you have control over the you know the line the line type of a lot of these objects if you import them as groups. Uh, I'm not sure why in this instance it wasn't importing each layer as a folder because I remember that in the past when I did uh, DXF imports it was able to import them and, and put every line in its own layer uh, so that made it easy to separate things but whatever we're still experiencing things perhaps I'll find out later why it was behaving like that so as you can see uh, I'm almost done with uh, importing uh, the extensions of the building as a group so this allows me now to control the line width like I was saying so basically if you come from a 2d uh, AutoCAD uh, background workflow uh, I think you would find FreeCAD extremely uh, re not rewarding extremely yes uh, I think you would find FreeCAD natural in 2D. FreeCAD has a natural way of modeling in 2D that if you're an AutoCAD person, uh, Blender and FreeCAD, uh, surprisingly for what they do, have more in common with AutoCAD than they do with Revit, which is a 3D application. So uh, if you come from an AutoCAD background, you might find that, uh, uh, you might find out that uh, 3CAD is uh, very very similar to how you're used to modeling in these applications so that's it um, you know those are the three uh, uh, pr uh, projects already so so that was that for this and so I think uh, you've seen the whole thing uh, until then I'll see you into the next tutorial and uh,
and uh, see you soon.